Um, and so that's an interesting problem to deal with because we're human. So this article caught my attention. It's a little older and it comes from science, which I have been avoiding science because sometimes it's annoyingly woke. Um, not necessarily true. This is actually, I think, a pretty decent article. Funding agencies reviewers were biased against scientists with novel ideas. Study of Swiss Agency is among the first to examine how proposals by unorthodox scientists fared. In science, novelty emerges only with difficulty manifested by resistance. So Thomas Kuhn wrote in his landmark, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. Some studies have backed up Kuhn's insight that the scientific establishment tends to be cool toward published ideas that challenge a discipline's entrenched paradigms. But there have been a few examinations of how research, agent, research funding agencies have treated scientists with novel ideas. Their yay or nay decisions largely determine whether unorthodox concepts take root and grow at all. Now a new study finds that at least one funder wasn't wild about researchers with records of pursuing out-of-the-box ideas. Those who applied to Synergia, a grants program at the Swiss National Science Foundation, over a five-year period, scientists who had a record of publishing novel papers received lower scores and 31% less likely to receive funding. Interesting. Although limited to a single funding program, the new study supports perceptions that grant reviewers were biased, are biased against novelty, says Yin Wang of... K.U. Levon, who was not involved in the research. He says the findings are consistent with research he co-authored that found a similar coolness toward unconventional ideas and grant making by the European Research Council. Reviewers may shy away from novel proposals because they fear the projects won't produce useful results. One big question Wang adds is, quote, how do we select reviewers or structure the selection process to mitigate bias against novelty? I don't know that you can, <laughs> to be honest. I don't know that you can. Sometimes you have to let, sometimes you have to put that wacky idea out there and just let people take a risk. Or you have programs that specifically cater toward wacky ideas. <laughs> because it is a danger that with something that is strange, you're not going to get a breakthrough result. Back matter, I think, what was it? It's like novel, no, a Nobel Prize winner, supposedly, at least in like physics and chemistry, they spend forever and ever and ever and ever doing all these little studies, all these little studies that ultimately lead up to the giant breakthrough. They're not going to come in and do with one grant and get the giant breakthrough right up front. So that's the real curiosity thing is if you're proposing something wacky, but you don't have anything behind it to back it up, then why should a funding agency fund it? That's a big risk for them, right? At the same time, if you can't get any funding because your idea is wacky, well, then you need a funding agency to fund you. And that's where you might have some something that is just focused on funding wacky ideas that are novel. Possible. Funding agencies ordinarily keep the identities of the grant applicants secret, but by pledging not to publish identifying details, the authors in the new study were allowed to examine funding decisions on 255 applications involving 775 scientists that were submitted to Synergia from 20, uh, 2008 to 2012. So this is actually pretty old. Overall, Synergia found, funded just under 50% of the applications. The authors report in the October issue of Science and Public Policy. The authors did not rate the novelty of the proposals themselves, calling that a question for future research. Hang on, hang on. Okay, instead they scored the applicant's track record of novelty using an existing method that examines unusual combinations of journal titles referenced by scientists' published research. Okay, so they didn't actually look at the novelty of the thing in question in the paper. Okay, hang on. <laughs> so when they did this study, they looked at whether or not the authors had a tendency to publish something novel, not whether the authors were putting in a proposal for something novel. So in other words, you don't actually know if this was about novelty. How could you know it was about novelty if during that period you did not look at whether or not the proposals that were put in were some for something novel? <sighs> that doesn't make sense! That doesn't make sense! <laughs> ah, that doesn't make sense to me. Answer that question. 
Their analysis indicated that track record that the track records carried more weight with reviewers. The Grant Awards revealed a bias. Okay, so they're considering the track records more important in this case. The Grant Awards revealed a bias against applications submitted by teams in which at least two thirds of the scientists had high novelty ratings. Other characteristics of the applicant teams, such as whether or not they were all Swiss, Swiss or larger than others, did not explain the outcomes. Although the applicants without other existing grants were also somewhat disfavored, noted the study's three co-authors. I'm not going to try and pronounce the names in Swiss. Why did grant reviewers take a such a dim view of potentially inf- innovative proposals? One possibility the authors suggest is that the applicants' previous scholarly findings had attracted few citations. Research has shown leading citation metrics tend to disadvantage papers containing novel results. They don't get cited as often. Um, compared, they don't always get cited as often unless they're a big deal. Compared with similar similar but conventional papers, they tend to be published in lower-profile journals and receive fewer citations within two years after publication, even though they often prove themselves in the long run, ending up with top citation rankings and inspiring follow-up studies. For scientists rejected by Synergia, there may have been a silver lining. All applicants tended to publish more scholarly articles for at least five years after submitting their proposals, regardless of whether they won funding, compared with scientists who did not submit. A UB and his colleagues found in a separate study of the same data set. They speculate that the application process encouraged applicants to forge connections and larger productive collaborations with other scientists. In 2016, Synergia moved to encourage novelty by explicitly soliciting proposals for breakthrough and interdisciplinary research. Despite the Foundation's strong interest in such proposals, quote, we admit that it is notoriously difficult to identify novelty and the potential for breakthrough before the research has been carried out, says Ann Jorstad data term head of the Swiss Foundation. She says too early to judge whether the change in criteria has paid off in a warmer embrace of unorthodox research. So this is one of the other things is that they're, for one thing, this is one study in Sweden. This is also other areas in Europe. I have no idea how this would relate to the U.S. and it doesn't necessarily. Although, we'll have to see. Um, I don't know if it's been studied in the U.S. That's another good question. But it is it says something about the nature of not wanting to, the nature of the groupthink issue that we're dealing with, and this is the university and the University of Austin now coming up to hopefully challenge all that, and the idea of fast grants challenging the traditional grant funding process. I think there needs to be new structures that, I think the new structures that maybe want to build, going back to Western philosophy and what have you, um, you need to make sure there is space for novel research to be attempted. Um, and these would be high risk. So for some funders, it may be very high risk. Um, and so that's the thing that needs to happen here. So I'd actually agree with this article in the sense that there needs to be more funding of novel stuff. And I know scientists who are brilliant at their field, who've gotten stuff published and have done some very novel work, but have been ignored because it goes against the mainstream. Um, and so that's an interesting problem to deal with because we're human (laughs) and there are a lot of these different things that affect the institutional structures that uh, supposedly guide what science is so that i just wanted to make this one really short really quick um with this because it i found this one interesting and it pairs nicely with the other video about um about the new scientific revolution because this kind of needs to be part of it making sure in whatever kind of scientific revolution we do in the u.s that it, A, gets rid of the woke. No more wokeness, please. No more wokeness in STEM. Um, that it can be funded quickly, but that it also promotes novelty and taking risks and chances and trying the weird ideas that need to be tried. Um, I think that would be great. Need to make sure that we promote that. Anyway, short, quick hit video on this one anyway. Just wanted to be really brief. Um, Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button on the way out the door. Share the video. Comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel. All that good jazz. And of course, be sure to come over and talk to us on shiosophia.locals.com. I'm Adrian. Until next time, I hope you stay curious.